Recently, the USDA dropped their 10-year update to their hardiness zone map. So what is the hardiness zone map anyway? It is produced by the USDA based on weather data. And it is really a tool to help gardeners and farmers to help them know how their winter is going to be. It is based on the average low temperature over the course of, in this case, 30 years. So the USDA took data points from 1991 to 2020 and created averages for different locations. They're actually using 13,412 different weather stations established all across the country to get these data points and create these averages. So it's an average lowest temperature in a particular location. You can find your growing zone on their website located by zip code. The zones are based on 10 degree increments, but then there are also subzones within those zones that are based on five degree increments. So what has changed? Well, the biggest change is that almost half of the United States moved up one zone. In other words, is warming and moved up from one zone to the next. The other half of the United States is also warming, but either did not warm enough or was already at the low range of one zone and is not quite into the next zone. So that's the big news. For those of you who are in Alaska, this data is so much more accurate for you. The USDA has spent the last 10 years really investing in monitoring Alaska, particularly, and there are more data points and more specificity for Alaskan gardeners. So that's fantastic news for you guys. There are nearly twice as many data collection centers now as there were in 2012, the last time this map was updated. So that's also great news for all gardeners. This data is even more accurate than it has been in the past. So what isn't included in the USDA's hardiness map? It is a really important tool, but there is more to choosing plants that are appropriate for your location than just your average cold temperature in the winter. So it does not take into account light levels, for example, humidity, rainfall, microclimate. Your yard, for example, may have areas that are colder than others or get more moisture or windier than others. And none of that is accounted for because that is hyper local. And so that's one of the reasons why you as a gardener have to kind of pay attention to not only what grows well in your yard, but what grows well in a particular location. It's the Beth Chatto motto, the right plant in the right location. So there's a lot that goes into determining what plants will be appropriate in a particular place. And the hardiness zones are just one tool. So I shifted from zone five to zone six and shifted up like half of the country did. So then the question becomes, what does this mean for me and for my garden? Not a whole lot. First of all, the USDA hardiness zones are really only applicable when you're choosing perennial plants. A perennial is a plant that lives out its life cycle over the course of multiple years. Think about a tree that could live 100 years or a rose bush that could live 50 years. As someone who is now in zone six, I can expect my average low temperature to be somewhere between five and 10 degrees below zero. Last winter, we got down to 22 below zero. I had a couple of rose bushes that did not make it through the winter as a result. Now, that data tells me that I need to choose plants that can handle extreme cold snaps like that. I actually tend to choose plants that are hardy to zone four, because that is the extreme cold weather that we tend to get. That doesn't happen every winter. I know that those perennials will probably make it through. Also thinking about how much of that plant overwinters above ground 
and how much of that plant overwinters below ground. Shrub, for example, that is especially when I'm going to pay attention to those growing zones because I know that those super cold snaps, that plant, since most of it is going to live above ground, those stems are going to be hardier over the winter because a plant that is rated for zones six to 10, when it gets to be 20 or 25 below, that plant's chances of making it through a cold snap, even if it's only 24 or 48 hours, are less than a plant that thrives in zones three through eight. I really take into account a plant's growth habit when I'm thinking about that. Herbaceous perennials, for example, die back to the ground over the winter. So what is surviving is what's underground. So a cold snap of 20 or 25 below zero is not going to be as hard on an herbaceous perennial in Colorado as it would be on a woody stemmed perennial. That is something to think about regardless of where you are. If you typically have cold weather at weeks at a time, that means maybe you want to choose plants that are rated for zones that are lower than you. If you have cold snaps that are pretty short, well then how you winterize those perennials is something to think about and whether you add some extra protection when you're expecting really cold weather. So where do you find out about a particular plant's hardiness zone? Well, if you're growing from seed, it will be included on the seed packet and it will say that this plant is perennial in zones three to nine, for example. That information is found on the seed packet itself. If you're buying plants from a nursery center, look on the tag for the plant and it will say hardy in zones four through nine, for example. That means it won't do well in zones that are above or below four and nine and that has to do with the plant's life cycle and its need, its temperature needs over the course of its life cycle. But again, a lot of the survivability of a plant over the winter has to do with how well the tissues above the ground are going to survive. And I know, for example, there are some people here in zones five and six who can overwinter their dahlia tubers in the ground. That is not a normal practice for dahlia tubers. Most people in cold zones like mine dig them up. But if you are in a place where you've mulched enough and all of these kinds of things, some people have a microclimate where they can overwinter their dahlia tubers in the ground. And good for you, that's fantastic. The part of the dahlia that overwinters is buried completely in the soil. And so its survivability is determined by how cold those soil temperatures get and how wet they are. Something like a shrub, for example, the tissues that are above the ground, that's what you're concerned about. You want to make sure that that and the roots of that shrub can survive the winter wherever you are in whatever zone you're in. So what are my takeaways from this big change on the USDA hardiness map? Number one, it really only applies to your perennial plants. This is not going to affect your vegetables. It doesn't affect the annuals that you grow. None of those things are affected. It really only pertains to perennials. Number two, you may have some new plants that you want to try in your zone. This is particularly true of nursery bought plants. For example, the varieties offered at your local nurseries may change over the next couple of years as nurseries start to stock plants that maybe do better in warmer climates than where you are. Um, and they may not stock quite as many plants that are as hardy in colder climates. So you might see some changes in local nurseries. Remember that the hardiness zone map does not account for a lot of the factors that we have to take into consideration when gardening. Light levels, water levels, humidity, 
all of those things, it is simply about how cold you can expect it to get over the winter. And that's an important takeaway. The other thing to remember is that you certainly can expect weather that is colder. It does not account for cold snaps during the winter. And so, like I said before, I'm going to plan for winter weather that is in the 20 to 25 degree below zero range, even though that is well beyond my zone six rating, because I know that that kind of weather does come. And when it comes, it will take out some of my perennials. So I need to make a plan for that and know which perennials are gonna need a little extra care if we are going to get that cold. So if your hardiness zone has changed, is it going to change what you plan in your garden for next year? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe and happy gardening.